Mr. Prime Minister, Namaskar. Inspired by your interview to the Times Now on 7th May, I, a humble citizen of the Republic, take this liberty of addressing you. In this first ever direct appeal to Muslims, you invited their introspection and reform. I am saying this for the first time. I have never taken this before. I am saying this for the Muslim community. I am saying this for the people who are studying. That they are doing this. Although I will be chided for this personally, I welcome your message as I welcomed the abolition of triple talaq. As a rationalist, I can't speak for Muslims, but I speak as an Indian who is proud of his Indo-Islamic cultural heritage, encompassing every landmark from Harappa and Mohenjo-daro to Taj Mahal and to our new parliament building. As a humanist, I have worked for Muslim introspection and reform, addressing tens of thousands in various parts of India, and even wrote an entire book called Khitab e Naum, specially written in Urdu to address the Muslim clerics. It was also transliterated in Hindi as Naya Savera and in Gujarati as Navu Prabhat, and was voice recorded in MP3 format. Following your appeal, Mr. Prime Minister, I once again commit myself to ceaselessly work for Muslim introspection and reform. But Mr. Prime Minister, I respectfully submit that rarely does community reform work in isolation. It is often born in the womb of overall social reform in a symbiotic relationship. Sustainable social reform needs a conducive environment and social harmony. It must proceed from free will and not under duress. It needs facilitation and state support. Many evils such as overpopulation and female feticide automatically vanish with facilitation such as education, poverty alleviation and checking child mortality and improving women's empowerment. Credible research shows that for the same level of education and income, Hindus and Muslims suffer from evils alike. Our constitution also enjoins me to do my fundamental duty and I quote Article 51 AE to promote harmony and the spirit of common brotherhood against all the people of India transcending religious, linguistic and regional or sectional diversities etc. Unquote. Article 51AH reminds me to develop scientific temper, humanism and the spirit of inquiry and reform. As a patriotic Indian, in my childhood as a Boy Scout and an NCC officer as an adolescent and later as a banker, a consultant and now a social servant, I have served my country to the fullest of my capabilities. At 72, I work 14 to 16 hours a day in the service of the nation with the support and guidance of some of the finest human beings who also happen to be Hindus and Jains. Whenever the nation needed, I volunteered my services. For instance, to promote peace and integration in Kashmir, I wrote to Mr. Vajpayee's PMO and the then NSA offering to go and work for two years for free using my previous Kashmiri connections. When the terrorists were holding innocent Hindus as hostages at Akshar Dham, I stopped to persuade the police to use me and my Urdu to let me talk and persuade them to surrender. You surely remember the barbaric serial bomb blasts at Ahmedabad. We identified and honored at the Dirpana Academy the heroes who helped the victims then. Even in regard to the gruesome 2002 riots on its first anniversary, although my own life was completely ruined, we remembered and immortalized the fraternity and solidarity shown by everyday Gujarati Hindus. Rather than keep reminding of death and destruction, we conferred the prestigious Salam Awards at the hands of the former Prime Minister Mr. Chandrasekhar. Even today, the metal and fiberglass made Salam Tree saluting the anonymous unsung Gujarati heroes adorns a lawn at the Tagore Hall 
in the central Ahmedabad, even if in a rather dilapidated condition. Sir, I mentioned the need for facilitation. Here are glaring cases of outright obstruction and prevention. Obviously, you may not even be aware of them, but the prevailing political climate lets zealots and reckless bureaucrats to cause irreparable damage to reformist work. For instance, we had set up a monumental question mark circle at an accident-prone traffic island in Ahmedabad to encourage the culture of questioning and inquiry. As you once reminded, in your monkey bath, it had a slogan, put short toj jan show, or ask so that you learn. It served the people for 12 long years with rich greenery, preventing accidents and promoting learning. We drew no commercial advantage whatsoever. We watered and maintained it for free until just before the last assembly election, it was removed without notice. Here is an even more troubling instance, sir. In 2004, we had set up the Muskan Park for adventure, science and harmony at the infamous Hindu-Muslim border of Vajalpur and Juhapura in Ahmedabad, replacing the State Reserve Police Camp. The land was allotted by order by the sagacious BJP leader Sri Surinder Patel. The park was inaugurated by the then governor. It had imaginative sports, gymnastic and science appreciation, gadgets and structures built using recycled material and a brand new fabulous auditorium which offered multiple social services with the support of several other NGOs including cultural activities and exchanges, science films and exhibitions, elderly care. It was hailed by Mr. Asit Vora, the then BJP's mayor of AMC, who even offered two more plots for the purpose, but we respectfully declined. Mr. L.K. Advani gave a MPLAD grant for flooring and borewell of the park. It was built and run without any government support for water, electricity and cleaning for 17 years. And yet we managed to serve over 15 lakh young and old from both localities connecting Ashoks and Akbars and Aliyahs and Asmitas. Mr. Prime Minister, you mentioned how the Arabs hail yoga. Undoubtedly, those that do not avail of this precious gift are stark losers. We taught yoga to numerous batches of Muslim women and men in this same auditorium. Not a single complaint was made against us for any wrongdoing whatsoever. Not a single penny was collected by us, ever. And yet, two years ago, suddenly, Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation demolished it with bulldozers. <laughs> Even denying to us the time to retrieve our precious assets of over rupees three crore, painstakingly built by buying, begging, and borrowing. With no one listening, we helplessly approached the Gujarat High Court. Broken and reduced to penury, we could not even hire a lawyer, as it is most lawyers wouldn't sue the government. I pleaded as a party in person without any experience. And the Honorable Court chided the AMC, penalizing it with rupees 25,000 as special costs. It hailed our services and asked AMC to use our expertise for the park. Almost a year to date, but no costs have been paid, no compensation offered, nor our demolished stocks restored. And the people of Juhapura forever denied the benefit of yoga. Alas, Akbar's and Aliyah's will no longer play there with Ashok's and Asmita's. I had submitted, sir, that a conducive environment is necessary for social reform. When I arrived in Ahmedabad in 1985, I took a flat in a Muslim area and within three months moved out of it to cosmopolitan Hindu society in Western Ahmedabad. In the 1992 riots, my relative's house was destroyed and one by one, every Muslim of the area left. These were 
and responsible citizens of India. But I continued to stay there as they moved to Muslim ghettos. I built my flat in a wholly non-Muslim society which graciously regarded me as its virtual president. Whenever I felt uncomfortable in the recurring riots, my neighbors and the builder ensured that I was comforted and I stayed on until a sad day in 1992, some miscreants came from somewhere and forced me to leave. I had to acquire in a hurry and at considerable cost an old flat in a society with a few Muslim houses. Come 2002, I had to leave even this house and was escorted by my Hindu friends to Juhapura. The state ceased to protect me. I became a refugee within my nation. That day, I had to make a choice, either to migrate to a Western country whose PR I already had, or to stay put. I chose the latter, sir. Following Gandhiji's example, not only did I wind up all my material pursuits, but plunged into social work, focusing communal harmony to rid India of all interpersonal strife using rationality. As founder chairman of a public group for internet, I had worked hard to bring internet to Gujarat, but I was unable to profit from it myself as high bandwidth service is still not available in the area where I have moved to. I respectfully submit Mr. Prime Minister that history teaches us that for enduring reform, statecraft must be delinked and divorced from religion. That is why I strongly denounce Muslim communal politics and firmly believe that only secular, rational road can deliver us. Afghanistan, Pakistan and Iran offer valuable lessons we mustn't ignore. Pakistan can never become a developed nation, while Bangladesh may someday with its secular approach. Sir, I do not grudge China its rising global ranking on various parameters. Instead, I learn from it. Its progress is largely due to elimination of such distractions as Mandir, Masjid, Hindu, Muslim, Dalit, Brahmins and its singular focus on personal growth of its citizens within an overall plan for national development with scientific temperament and in strictly rational ways. For India to claim its rightful place in the community of nations, let us foster a climate of reason and rationality and scientific temper. Let's usher in a revolution for introspection and reform in every sphere. Let us emulate the European Renaissance. Towards this objective, Mr. Prime Minister, we are building with the help of magnificent Hindus, Jains and Muslims, the Turkic Sadan or the House of Reason, without a penny's help from the government so far. Now that the Prime Minister of the Republic has heard me, may I take the liberty of asking, will the demolished question mark circle be restored? Will the Muskan Park be rebuilt? Will our huge losses be compensated for? Will the government support the Turkic Sadan? And whether the Gujarat government will channelize our patriotism, experience and commitment to reform for building an impacting size popularization museum at the famous Ahmedabad riverfront? Once this much needed renaissance happens, there will be a race for reform and we will have an acceptable uniform civil code willingly embraced by all. Kashmir and Northeast will truly integrate with the mainland lovingly and hopefully the subcontinent may become a peaceful confederation of sovereign nations, a virtual Akhand Bharat will be reborn. Surely the Prime Minister of India won't mind this humble citizen's monkey bath. But my friends worry that some zealots in the party or the government may harass me for this video. I believe and fondly hope that the PMO will ensure that this doesn't happen to me. In the meantime, sir, as inspired by you, I will continue to pursue Muslim introspection and reform relentlessly. Thank you very much.